In this lesson, we are going to go deep dive into Azure Virtual Machine. And within this lesson, we will learn about how to capture performance diagnostics for a VM. How can you recover a failed virtual machine, virtual machine configuration options and various sizing considerations. Let us start with understanding how to capture performance diagnostics for a virtual machine. The performance diagnostic tool helps you troubleshoot performance issues that can affect a Windows virtual machine. Supported troubleshooting scenarios include quick check on known issues and best practices and complex problems that involve slow VM performance or high usage of CPU, disk space or memory. You can run performance diagnostic directly from the Azure portal where you can also review insights and a report on various logs, rich configuration and diagnostic data. Performance Diagnostics installs a virtual machine extension that runs a diagnostic tool that is named Perf Insights. The next one is how can you recover a failed virtual machine by using a rescue virtual machine? So if an Azure virtual machine is inaccessible, it may be necessary to attach the operating system disk to another virtual machine to perform the recovery steps. So let me go to the Azure portal and show you the process on a high level. So I'm on my Azure portal, go to virtual machines and first of all, you need to stop the failed VM. So assume this is the virtual machine you're having trouble with, make sure you stop it. So you can stop a virtual machine by going into uh, this ellipsis and click on stop. Or you can go to the main virtual machine overview pane and you can stop it from here as well. After stopping the virtual machine, go to the disk and you can select the disk and you can create a snapshot of the disk and then you create a new temporary VM which is known as a rescue VM and attach the disk what you created using this snapshot to the rescue VM and then connect to the rescue VM to investigate and mitigate issues with the failed virtual machine OS disk. The next step is to detach the failed VM OS disk from the rescue VM and perform a disk swap to swap the failed VM operating system disk from the rescue VM back to the failed VM. And the last step is to remove the resources that were created for the rescue virtual machine. So now let's look into sizing a virtual machine. We talked about it briefly on the previous lesson. So rather than specifying a processing power, memory and storage capacity independently, Azure provides different virtual machine sizes that offers variations of these characteristics. The best way to determine the appropriate virtual machine size is to consider the type of workload your virtual machine need to run. For mostly general purpose, go with D-series virtual machines. Let's look into virtual machine configuration options. The size of the virtual machine that you use is determined by the workload that you want to run. The size that you choose then determines factors such as processing power, memory and storage capacity. Azure offers a wide variety of sizes to support many types of users. Each size provides a range of configuration options to support various workload that may possibly run in Azure. Let's look into the virtual machine categories next. You can design Azure virtual machines for a wide variety of workloads starting from economical entry level virtual machines to high performance virtual machines for specialized workloads. The first one is entry level virtual machines. These entry level virtual machines are economical, low cost virtual machines for workloads that normally don't use a lot of CPU, but occasionally need to burst to handle higher workloads. The next type is burstable. Burstables are designed for workloads that will run for a long period of time by using a small fraction of the allocated CPU performance and then spike to the full power of the CPU due to incoming traffic or required work. The third type and the most commonly used are general purpose. This provide balanced CPU to memory ratio. This is ideal for testing and development small to medium databases and low to medium traffic web servers. The next type is compute intensive. So this offers high CPU to memory ratio. These virtual machines are good for medium traffic web servers, network appliances, 
batch processes and application servers. Fifth type is memory optimized. Memory optimized virtual machines offer high memory to CPU ratio. These are great for relational database servers, medium to large caches and in-memory analytics. The next one is GPU accelerated. These are specialized virtual machines targeted for heavy graphic rendering and video editing as well as model training and inferencing with deep learning. These are available with single or multiple GPUs. The seventh type is high performance computing. These virtual machines offer fastest and most powerful CPU virtual machines with optional high throughput network interfaces. And the last type is storage optimized. These virtual machines offer high disk throughput and IO ideal for big data, SQL, no SQL databases, data warehousing and large transactional databases. So rather than specifying processing power, memory and storage capacity independently, Azure provides different virtual machine sizes that offer variations of these characteristics. The best way to determine the appropriate virtual machine size is to consider the type of workload your virtual machine need to run. Now let's look into how can you manage the availability of your virtual machines. First of all, what is availability? Availability is the percentage of time a service is available for use. Let's assume you have a website and you want your customers to be able to access information at all times. Your expectation is 100% availability of concerning websites access. Azure Virtual Machines run on physical servers hosted within the Azure Data Center. As with most physical devices, there are chances that there could be a failure. If the physical server fails, the virtual machines hosted on the server will also fail. If this happens, Azure will move the virtual machine to a healthy host server automatically. However, the self-healing migration could take several minutes, during which the applications hosted on that virtual machine will not be available. And maintenance events range from software updates to hardware upgrades and are required to improve platform reliability and performance. These events usually are performed without impacting any guest virtual machines. But sometimes the virtual machines will be rebooted to complete an upgrade or update. So let's talk about the high availability and disaster recovery options. First, let's learn about the availability sets. Availability set is a logical grouping of virtual machines within a data center that allows Azure to understand how your application is built to provide for redundancy and availability. Two or more virtual machines should be created within an availability set to provide for a high available application and to meet the 99.95 Azure SLA. An availability set is composed of two additional grouping that protect against hardware failures and allow update to safely apply fault domains and update domains. The next high availability options are availability zones. Availability zones are alternates to availability set and expand the level of control you have over maintaining the availability of the application and data on your virtual machines. An availability zone is a physically separate zone within an Azure region. And there are three availability zones per supported Azure region. Each availability zone has a distinct power source, network, and cooling. By architecting your solutions to use, by architecting your solution to use replicated virtual machine in zones, you can protect your apps and data from the loss of a data center. If one zone is compromised, then replicated apps and data are instantly available in another zone. And each Azure region is paired with another region within the same geography, together making a region pair. The next one is region pairs. 
So each Azure region is paired with another region within the same geography, together making a region pair. This approach allows for the replication of resources such as VM storage across a geography. This should reduce the likelihood of natural disasters, civil unrest, power outages or physical network outages affecting availability. Next thing you need to understand images in Azure Marketplace. A marketplace image in Azure has following attributes. It has a publisher, the organization that created the image. Examples include Canonical and Microsoft Windows Server. Second one is Offer, the name of the group of related images created by a publisher. Examples include Ubuntu Server and Microsoft Windows Server. Third is SKU. An instance of an offer such as a major release of a distribution. Examples include 1804 LTS and 2019 data center edition etc. And finally it will include version. The version number of the image SKU. So to identify marketplace image when you deploy a virtual machine programmatically supply these values individually as parameters. And please note Images are unique to Azure region and you may find a different list of images in each region. So another important service you need to understand is Azure Shared Image Gallery or SIG. Shared Image Gallery is a service that helps you build structure and organization around your managed images. Shared Image Gallery provides you managed global replication of images, versioning and grouping of images, highly available images with zone redundant storage, sharing across subscription even between Azure AD tenants and scaling your deployment with image replicas in each region. And the last topic in this lesson is Virtual Machine Serial Console. The Serial Console in Azure Portal provides access to a text-based console for virtual machines. This serial connection connects to the TTY S0 serial port for Linux virtual machine and COM1 serial port for Windows virtual machines. The serial console provides access to the VM independent of the network or operating system state. And the serial console can only be accessed by using the Azure portal. That concludes this lesson. In the next lesson, we are going to learn about Azure Resource Manager templates. So I will see you on the next one. Until then, take care.